Hello, hey, and welcome to Rushed Vibes. We are the Rushed Vibers. I'm Jess. That's David. And here we are for another episode. Back like we never left. Because we didn't. Because we didn't here live from Rush Vibe Studios. I feel like a sound effect, but I can't do that. Pew, pew. <laughs> not pew, the, pew. Not the pew, pew. So we, um, we had a family weekend this past weekend. We were celebrating my dad's birthday. 74, by the way. My dad is almost three quarters of a century old. This is true. He's almost 75. Three quarters. Almost a dollar. It's crazy. Uh, And so we were playing Boggle. And it got very competitive. (laughs) Very competitive. So competitive to to the point that my brother Daniel asked if we could do sound effects like pew. (laughs) 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 Pew, pew. Just so that we could get ahead, because apparently when you have lived for 74 years, you have essentially memorized yeah. the dictionary and it was, know every word. At one point he was saying words, and I was like, I don't even know if that's a real word, but I'm yeah. going to go with it. Because yeah, my dad is, it's demoralizing playing against him because me and Jess were talking about it today. You'll you'll have your words. And for those of you who don't know how Boggles played, it's a, it's a board game or it's... You have a bunch of cubes with letters on on different sides. You shake it up, and then you have three minutes to basically find as many words as you can. And so everyone goes, however many players you have. So we had four, we had five. five people playing. Every person gets a turn going around saying the words that they have, and if somebody else has it, then you mark it off. But if nobody else has it, you get one point for three to four-letter words and then so forth. So I would go first. And I would get my points, and then Jess would go second to last, and she would have words that nobody had except for my dad. And he would. And then when it was his turn, he would have like ten more words that nobody else, like even, could even see on the board. And it's just it's unfair. I'm convinced he cheats. That he cheats somehow. <laughs> somehow he he cheats. We didn't let him to. He didn't. He didn't get to shake. The, uh, we didn't the, let him sharpen the, one, the pencil. Sharpen I the didn't pencils. let him distribute paper. I didn't let him touch anything. The only thing he and you know what? Maybe we shouldn't let him do the timer because he was setting the timer. Maybe cheating. He's an ama- like if there is a boggle tournament for cash, please let us know. I I'm not even going to ask his permission. I will submit him to like boggle of champions because yeah. he is boggle goat like yeah, he's pretty good no one I, I don't think anyone comes close like don't try and, and offer up your 72 year old grandma nah she's gonna lose um he's he sets the bar high like i i aspire to be as good at boggle as he is to the point that i went to the app store and i found a boggle app so that i can expand my miscellaneous word knowledge so that next time I see him, I can hopefully win. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. One day I'm gonna. One yeah. day I'm gonna win. I think I'm gonna beat him first. I don't think so. No, that's gonna happen. I, I feel so. it. I was I'm, only. I only lost by eight. Eight points. I was close. We went to one hundred and I and ninety two. That was just luck. I'm usually like right, right there on this. Um. So now that we got that out of the way, now that we want to let, now that we let the world know. That my father cheats at Boggle and Jessica is smacking microphones with her glass. We need to do some celebrating here at Rush Vibes because we have reached 100 followers on Instagram. Woo woo. Woo woo. A A stack. Is that a stack? Most people would say a thousand is a stack. Oh, I mean, I don't use that kind of terminology. Yeah, clearly. We have, reached, we, have, we have reached 100 followers on Instagram. So shout out to everybody who followed us. Um, we, we appreciate you. We definitely appreciate you. We hit 100 on uh, Facebook first. We said we want to turn our attention to Instagram. We did. We hit both goals within a week of declaring them. So now we turn our focus to YouTube, where we currently have 68 
Okay. Subscribers. So we want to get to 100 and then that'll be the trifecta. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So okay. if you're watching us for the first time, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We are uh, we are taking all any and all <laughs> All subscribers, even Russian bots. Log, we just want to get into your kids. Like, we just want to get to kids account and just you know switch over to adult YouTube. Subscribe. That's right. That email address you don't use anymore. It's supposed to be for your spam. Go ahead, subscribe. Log in. Like, log in, I subscribe. mean, just do us that. Do us that solid. We're not yeah. asking for much. Not, not, not asking for a lot at all. But we do have. Uh, we have, we've we've experimented recently with having some guests on. We had our, our cousin Mark, who was a retired New, retired New York police department detective. Um, who uh, dropped some gems and gave us some insight from, you know, a black man and also a police officer's point of view of a lot of the uh, headlines that have been in the news recently. So that got obviously the the most views that, that we've seen so far and it generated a lot of interest in the channel. So if you're here uh, and you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Go ahead and hit the like button as well. Stop messing with the microphone. I just this is my what posture. This is what the check, this is what the sound check and all that but is for. But sound check, I was slouching and I felt like sitting up better. Um, and follow us on Facebook and uh, Instagram as well so we can continue to grow our vibe tribe there. Um, that is about all the announcements I think I have. Do you have any? No. No? Okay. Well, shout out to everybody who's new to us and has Welcome. followed and subscribed. We appreciate, welcomes we, you. We appreciate you guys. Uh, and still more guests to come, by the way. We're not done by a, by a long shot. So stay tuned for some more local guests, local to Charlotte, North Carolina. If you couldn't North tell, that's where we're. So Rush Vibe Studios is Even located. if you couldn't tell. Well, I mean, Charlotte is built into a lot of our branding. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like logo. based off where we're sitting. I was like, no. this, this setup couldn't no. literally what are you? What are you drinking? Just a margarita. Just a margarita. What are you drinking? Four Roses. So just bourbon. Bourbon. But it's Four Roses bourbon. Small batch. Congrats. Yeah. Shall we? Personally, I prefer my batches big. Oh, sorry. Mm. So, uh, ooh. <coughs> bourbon hit me a little, hit me a little strong. It's a small batch for you. Um, <laughs> so we're going to, uh, change our format up a little bit. We're going to take our first break a little early and then we're going to come back and we're going to jump right into our topic today. We have been, um, talking about some really heavy things here recently, mm -hmm. really, really, really heavy. And we decided that, Hey, this isn't just a doom and gloom podcast. Hey, although, you know, the, the headlines, doom and gloom world, the headlines that we were dealing with are very real and they do affect us, but, uh, we wanted to do something a little lighter and a little bit more inspiring and encouraging. So we're going to have each of us give our top five things did you only do two or three? <laughs> What's up with that face? Nothing. Maybe not top five, but five things we each uh, love about marriage. Or maybe one thing that we, so maybe this would be like, based on Jessica's reaction, make uh, my this, might be, face. this might be like a, like a 20 minute podcast. So we're going to take our first break early. <laughs> we're going to come back. We're going to get right into the, uh, to the, um, to the topic and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So do you have anything else? Oh, um, we're gonna talk about the Oscars. We can talk about the Oscars. You wanna talk about the Oscars a little bit? Oscars so colored. Oscars so colored, yes. It was, uh, what, it was like six years ago where Oscars were so white. Yep. I can't believe that was six years ago. That seems like it seemed so recent, but also so far away. But yeah, so the Oscars aired the the COVID style mid Post COVID style, I guess that's what we're gonna call this this era that we're in. I think it's is it it's the first live. No, it wasn't because the uh, I think the Grammys might have been live, like with an audience. Anyway, um, our boy David Kaluuya won, which that's that that whole supporting actor is really confusing because David got nominated for Judas and the Black Messiah, but so did Lakeith. Uh, I said David. You did. I'm I, was looking, like, I wasn't. I'm, I wasn't in. You weren't. Trust <laughs> I, me. I, I think you know. I think I'm an underrated actor. But you know, I, <laughs> you, my, you my agent. See. My agent hasn't pulled you through yet. You didn't see his we're cameo. Not, he was there. We're not, uh, um, we're they're not still there engraving yet. his Oscar. It's on yeah, the way we're, back. We're not from, there yet. From L. A. Uh, excuse me, Daniel 
and Lakeith were both nominated for Best Supporting Actor, but they were both in the same film. And I feel like Daniel was the lead. And but I don't know if they just didn't want to put him in the same category as Chadwick, which is a whole other topic. Um, but congrats to to Daniel made a, a really entertaining speech, embarrassed his mom. Um, I thought it was precious. It was amazing. Uh, I think because he does so many Eng- like American English roles, I forget that he's actually english i mean he's he can be quite difficult to understand sometimes because he like gets on this like quick quick speech um and you're like wait slow down like you're english but you're also sounding a bit jamaican too at the same time but um he i find him to be a phenomenal actor uh very versatile um so i i support that he won that role that um award i think i think i felt like lakeith should have been recognized in some way besides just a nomination. So I think that's why I'm bothered that they were both in the same category because I felt that Lakeith... Um, Lakeith seems to be underrated. Like, I don't think he gets as much attention as he should. He, too, is versatile. Um, low quirky. I'm still recovering from that one movie. Uh, what was it? Oh, there was a I movie that he was in, and it was one of the most bizarre waste of my life movies i ever (laughs) seen and by the time i realized like he turns into a horse at the end of the movie by the time i realized that this movie is a waste of my life and i can't get it back i was too invested like i at this point it was like i just need to see it so Um, it's not uncommon for excuse me uh hollywood personalities to be different he's just I mean, dummy people in Hollywood are just no. I, I I appreciate that he he does he is a different type of personality. Um, I believe his hair was blonde, if I'm not mistaken. Like you know, I think I think it's cool. I I love this new era that the black man is going into, where you know it's not like the three XTs and suits. Like like it seems like those were the mm. only two options. We didn't, we didn't came a long way, <laughs> bros. We came a long way from them them tall tees. It Goodness. seems like and slouch socks and the rubber bands on you. Whew. You had to put rubber bands on. You used to put rubber bands on your socks to keep the keep the, the long pants from overlapping. So that would keep them keep them wow, in place. Yeah. So much effort. I didn't know yeah. that. Um so I appreciate that there's there's more than just like hood fashion and just like fancy and then like basic sure. in the middle. There's more there there's there's more elaborate options. Um especially for the black men because I think there's a lot of intricacies in in how black men can fit fashion wise into this world. I feel like, you know, white guys can be preppy and they can be punk and they can be, you know, emo. Like they can go all different types of directions and, you know, obviously black people are, more, are criticized more. So I like Lakeith's style. Um he I think he does he did a good job in um the photograph. Uh it just kind of shows just just how versatile he is. But I wish that they had been in they weren't in the same category so that they both could have had an opportunity to come back with an Oscar because that would have been amazing for them both because the little of Judas and the Black Messiah that we did watch um, before you fell asleep on the couch, uh, I thought that they were both doing an amazing job. So that's my stance. I didn't watch all the award ceremony. I'm not a huge award ceremony person because most of the time I haven't seen half the stuff that's being nominated. And I would say, oh, I'm going to go back and watch it. I never do. Um, but I thought it was I thought it was good. It was nice to see people around people again. Um, kind of like the glimmer of hope that like the world's going to open up again and we'll be able to be around people and, you know, not cringe when someone gets close or hugs someone that they're not living with. Yeah. Um, also, shout out to Two Distant Strangers, which is the first... Uh, Rush Vibes, a movie review, movie that Rush Vibes is then review on to win an Oscar. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying that we have anything to do with we it. Totally, we I'm, totally have. I'm just saying, you know, we happen to review it. A week later, it wins an award. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We know that members of the Academy are watching. Yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, another one for uh, diversity. Uh, Chloe Zhao uh, came sent the second woman ever to win Best Director. And uh, first, first woman of color to uh, to take home the the award. So definitely a 
a nice award season for for diversity and um and the team that did the makeup the hair and makeup for, for ma yep. rainey um they won and that was beautiful to see yep soul got a win yep. i was surprised i didn't i think i assumed everyone involved in soul was black nope but they did have uh i can't remember what they called them a culture culture advisor it might have been which, to, which uh, is make now sure going to be a job i'm going to pursue Yo. i think i'd be an amazing look culture advisor no excuses if you want a job to make a if you want something to be a career there chances are it's a there is a niche out there that you can service people and you will be wildly successful i'm going um, to be a multicultural culture advisor yeah so uh, but it was, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that this was the lowest rated Oscars ever in terms of viewer count. Only about 9.8 people, I believe. 9.8 million people oh, watched. 9.8 people. I was like, that's oh, down, that's one of the nine. Yeah, down over over 50% from last year, which was like 23 million who watched it. So, I mean, there, there are a couple of things there. Uh, I think the pandemic, um, a lot of people probably weren't able to watch a lot of the movies that were up for awards, so they didn't feel like there's a need to tune in. There's been a it. there's been a thing recently where uh, a lot of networks and, and and studios are blaming Nielsen for not being able to accurately uh, measure how many people are watching what because of the pandemic. Uh, Nielsen wasn't sending their field representatives in the home, so there there may be some uh, there may have been some some people. Uh, some people are claiming that there may have been some compromise data it may not be as accurate as it has been in years past but i don't think that's it i think people are just i think viewing habits are changing mm -hmm. uh but the pandemic did play a role a lot of people probably didn't see any of these movies so they felt like they wouldn't know there wouldn't be a reason to watch and honestly so. i think people might not have known like and i know it seems weird like I watched the morning shows, so I think Friday, Kelly and what's his face? Ryan, they were talking about the, like the after show that they were going to do. Um, but I forgot, I, I had forgotten, I think I had seen something either on Facebook that reminded me that morning. So I said, oh, I'll watch it. And then I forgot. And then, you know, I think someone, you know, the pre-red carpet show. So either people or CNN or, or somebody had, you know, pushed an Apple notification through and maybe it was 7.30, and I was trying to find the remote, um, and then I got distracted. And then it was 8.30 that it was, like, someone posted, like, Zen, one of the news circuits posted those in day in yellow. And I was like, oh, why is she wearing yellow? And then I remembered, and that's when I turned it on. So I was probably about 30, 40 minutes late. Um, and I don't know why I was motivated to watch it. I think I anticipated Chadwick was going to win. So I just wanted to, to see that. I wanted to see, you know the multicultural excellence. Um, but spoiler I, Chadwick did not win. If you haven't, I'm seen sure, the news. I'm sure you all know by now, they, uh, they changed the format. They, they normally do best picture last, but they did it before best actor and best actress. So it led a lot of people to believe, Oh, they're going to give Chadwick best actor posthumous and, uh, you know, have a little dedication, a little tribute. Anthony Hopkins won, which I, apparently he did a really, really good, gave a really good performance. I, I didn't see the father. Um, but he wasn't even there to give a speech, so it just kind of ended. <laughs> Apparently, he was woken up at four a.m. and had to record his speech. Yeah. And it. So um, it was a it was a bit of a blunder to end, but I, I like the way that they shot it. It was it was kind of cool. It was a nice change up. But yeah, could have could have ended on a higher note. Yeah, they um, they should have. And I don't know if they're so, ever going to make amends, but I think they should have hit. I, I think just everyone else gave, like honor Chadwick, and it's not like they were. It was a sympathy honor, like he legitimately did great work, so he was deserving of it. Uh, so they should have they should have given it to him. Um, I mean, Sir Anthony Hopkins is you know he's he's Sir, but I still think Chadwick should have gotten it. Uh, I had prepared my heart to hear. Uh, an acceptance speech from his wife I uh, had you know our box of tissues nearby because when she takes she when she gives an acceptance speech like my heart falls to pieces but anyway I thought um, you know I'm not a huge awards person I think a lot of people aren't either I feel like this generation doesn't really care as much as old generations did so you know it was nice seeing it i wonder if future award shows are going to you know stay in similar fashion like is it required that i 
fly all the way to LA and go to, you know, the Dolby theater or can I just stay in my condo in New York or my beach house in Savannah, whatever. So we'll see, we'll see how, you know, COVID's going to change things and maybe the ratings will go up for the next award show. Yeah, maybe. Um, so much for our new format. Uh, we were supposed to cut it a little short. We ended up going about 20 minutes. So for our first segment, but I did forget that we were supposed to talk about the Oscars. You so, did. so now that we got that and now, so now we can take our break. Um, and maybe next week we'll, we'll try our new format. So we'll take a break, come right back. And then we'll talk about top five things that the team here at rush vibes love about marriage. This should be interesting. Mm-hmm. Because we have not discussed this with one another, so mm-hmm. it'll be kind of cool. All and right, I have an announcement. Oh Lord, we'll be back. <laughs> we are back. We are in the building. Pew pew. I need to keep your keep out of my shot. Ran out of my shot. So we are going to have our second marriage topic here on Rush Vibes. The first one um, was memorable for a number of reasons. Mm-hmm. But this one will probably... It now affects my response to this one. Our, um, this one should, should be a lot more uh, enjoyable. To have and, and to watch. I'm, I'm so mess it up. We're going to do, like I said, top five things that we love most about marriage. Uh, we'll do two and two. And then we'll do three and three in our second segment. And then we'll, or third segment. And then we'll, we'll wrap up. So one of us will go. And then we'll have an opportunity to have, a, you know, if the conversation stems from that, the conversation stems from that. If not, we'll just move on to the next one and move on to the next person. And then we'll just kind of go. But this is interesting because I have no idea what Jessica is going to say. Jessica has no idea what I'm going to say, even though if you ask her, she'll probably say, I know what he's going to say. But she doesn't know. I know what he's going to say. She don't know. So, my dear, ladies first, I give you the floor. Okay. And, and these are not in any particular order, right? Just. Sure. Top five in any. I mean, I'm I'm just I'm I'm pulling. It. So I'm the kid who just didn't do my homework. Um, so uh, I guess uh, the number one thing for me, and I'm just gonna be like full transparency, just guilt free sex. So I feel like that's that's a perk. Guilt free, enjoyable sex. Sure. <laughs> I told you I was intentional. I'm intentionally going to make this difficult because I still have, I still have feelings from the last, the last time we discussed marriage. But yeah, I feel like, you know, when you're single and you're just out in the streets, I personally don't know. I was sanctified and baptified and holified and, <laughs> but um, it, it's almost as if when you get ma'am. married, you're ma'am. just, <laughs> ma'am. You do realize for a por- a good portion of your pre-marriage life was dating me. And I've already said that we had a lot of sex before we got married in a previous podcast. You so said that? Yeah, I said it when Cynthia was I need you to go trying to take over. Redact that. Um, uh, it's out there, the words out there for the world to see. So, so I'll yeah, I'd, I'd say that that's probably... That's, that's that's probably it i mean i feel like people get married and sex just becomes such a weird uncomfortable thing to to talk about and i'm not really sure why um because i because so when single people are getting it in like everybody knows they're getting it in uh and they just shout it from the rooftops like you'd think they were a keem just to be loved like to have sex they're just like all about it so uh I, that's i mean that's a perk like it's guilt free. Um, you don't have to feel like a so sinner. You're, you're saying, you're saying if you're single, oh, I there's mean, there's a guilt to speaking about having sex. Yeah, I I feel like it. I mean, if you're Christian um, oh. or have a f- some type of spiritual faith background, you know, you uh, you have a feeling of condemnation at times. Uh, mm. If that is something that you partake in, I ain't judging you. Um, I don't really care. Get yours. Um, but that is uh, that is something. And I mean, even in the long term, that's and, and this is just 
you know, stemming from the church and probably psychological things that I should work through with a, with a therapist. But, you know, it, it, it can be something that it's hard to separate yourself from even when you are married and it's like sure. you you do have the right to have sex and sex just becomes such a taboo and it wasn't until recently that even just saying the word was like yeah go intercourse intimacy like no it's sex like that's that's what it is penis vagina in insert sex so Knock, knocking boots yeah so it's like we like literally <laughs> what's up with Dan- the what's up you know when Daniel I- said in his speech yesterday and it was like like yeah, his mom oh, got yeah, embarrassed, yeah. but yeah. it's yeah. true. Like you know, I, his parents met; they had sex, and they had him. Like that's that's literally how most of us are here. You know, I feel like I haven't um I haven't given America uh, a side side quest story in a while, so I have one um, uh, that relates to being single and and having sex or having sex out of outside of marriage. You know, I uh, moved to North Carolina when I was fifteen. And uh, my cousin, Ashley, was living here. She's from here. Born and raised, Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey, girl, hey. Oh, we're supposed to do dinner with them. When? I'm supposed to actually schedule it. <laughs> when? I'm supposed oh, y'all been talking it. about it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, as long as it's on you. Um, so she had a friend who I will not name because you never know what's going to happen in the future. Uh, but she uh, took interest to me. Yeah. Me somewhat to her so she hit me with this phrase now keep in mind i'm from northern virginia i'm coming down to the uh the bible belt uh south south uh southeast and uh so there's there's a bit of a language barrier in terms of like slang and things and whatnot like the slang that we use in northern virginia it may not be the same as what they use down here in the qc so we're hanging out one day and she hits me with some what's up with the what's up Exactly, and that's exactly how I respond. I was like, <laughs> like I don't know, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> Apparently, what's up with the what's up is like, yo, when we gone? You know what I'm saying? So, of course, I didn't find out until after we were no longer interested in one another. You missed your what's up opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've missed. I, I feel like I've missed so many opportunities. Yes. Um. There, are, I have stories. I have stories of uh, <laughs> just being completely oblivious to uh still just is. just signs like just right here still is. right here in my face still but is. yeah so the, the what's up with the what's up so it's interesting um because um one of my my five are you done with yours yeah yeah one of my fives is it's yeah, yeah one of mine is actually uh the fact that i don't have to deal with the dating scene because it just seems so stressful to be to be single in today's world and, and it's it is it's kind of like uh netflix right you know people talk about oh when netflix was first coming up it was it was legit because it was new it was different um i don't have to go out i don't have to return cds i don't have to put anything in the mailbox i can just stream but netflix gets big and then you just have all this content you just become it's so exhausting. it's so overwhelming that you just get an anxiety about it and i feel like it's the same way with dating like before, pre-pandemic you had uh tinder you had bumble you had um oh uh there's a far in there like a farmer one there's a farmer's one farmer's there's, one there's you like got a, like a silver one christian mingle there's like one for like the elders there's um yeah no oh, snap and they're commercial i was like okay yeah, what's up I, with the what's up with the what's up so it's just like there's just so many different ways to like so many different funnels you you have to to meeting someone and you would think that it's like oh well, it's great. It like increases my my odds and chances, but it just to me, it just seems just like so cumbersome. There's a part of me that, and maybe it's the part of me that appreciates a challenge that I wish I could have had the opportunity to like experience that the the app and the swiping. Like I never got to like formally want, like do the whole formal dating thing. I want I like, want an annulment. Cool. Um, uh, that was going to be my announcement. So, Hey, uh, rush vibes, never- <laughs> rush vibes is no more. This is the, no, we're going to do season- like, we're going to do like JLo and, and a rod season and, and series and finale. Still keep our business ventures together, oh, but, rush be, vibes. but be apart. It's over. But I just feel like, you know, so we got together, I was 21. Um, so I never really got in, like, we got married. I was 24. So, and we were together 
Thurish uh, from 21 to 24. So, you know, there was never really heavy, heavy emphasis on the ish. The ish. On the ish. Um, there, I never really got to experience the whole, oh, like, you know, someone setting you up and, you know, uh, you meet them here at eight o'clock. For well, we, we were kind of set up. Not really. Uh, we were and we weren't. Um, I guess I'm mistaken. Or just the, like, you know, the blind dates or the, you know, the communicating with someone via an app and then having to like introduce yourself to them in person and build. So it's like, for me, I'm like, that's, that seems kind of cool. Like all of this started while we were well into our marriage. So, or peaked while we were well into our marriage. So, you know, not that I'm like, like, let me take a break and get into this, this life and see what it's about. And then, you know, pop back. But I just feel like it'd be, it, it would have. It would have been cool to have those kind of stories. Like I hear like some girlfriend stories just about how someone was one way. Like I, for me, it's more humor. I think maybe I, I've watched too much reality TV. So I'm like vicariously living through people. For some of you, I apologize. I know you're in it and it's probably just overwhelming and stressful. And you're like, where are these men's? Um, where are these women's? Yes. And I'm, I'm putting plural. I, I don't care. Um, but yeah, I just think it's like, ah. It could be fun. No, it couldn't. Like dating could be fun. No, I would be. I, if, if, but that's ev- you. Heaven forbid, if we if we if there was a point in which we didn't make it, man, I'd just be a bachelor the rest of my life. It's just lies. It's just lies. too much. Because then you gotta go out. Like I, we're, we're coming up on like ten years that I haven't had to like pursue anyone or get to know anybody for the first time have to, have to get through well i mean somebody new somebody I'm who new. I, i'm not evolving i'm not changing <laughs> i'm just i'm just i mean what, just yes you are but i mean I, I plain baloney but there are still core principles of you that are you and i've always been you and will continue to be you to switch it and i'm talking up. about and i'm talking about somebody unknown an unknown entity uh and it's just like, to me, it's just exhausting thinking about Because I look on Twitter, I look on Facebook. Like, I had to get to the point on Facebook where I, I literally, if I'm friend with, friends with you, I probably don't follow you on Facebook. But we're still friends because I don't want to, like, just unfriend everybody. But because I just kept seeing, like, all this toxic men ain't shit and, like, oh, women, me, women, this, women, that. And it's just like. It's like, yo, I don't, why am I subjecting myself to this? I don't have to deal with any of it. This is true. Now I got to deal with getting yelled at for, you know, not putting dirty clothes in the hamper instead on the floor right next to the hamper. But that's fine. I take that any day of the week over just some of the just trash that's out there. Not people, but just the mindsets. It's just like. Do y'all know what sacrifice is? Do you know what compromise is? Do you understand that like to find somebody who you're going to be with for an extended period of time, if that's something you want, you're going to have to bend a little. Somebody else going to have to bend a little. And you have to meet each other in the middle. Like you ain't going to get, you're not going to get all 100% of exactly what I want. You're not going to get perfection out of a partner. Like, and I wonder like, where do people get these expectations from? Like, is it movies? I think it's movies. Is it movies? Like, is it media? Big, but. Or the it stuff could just that, but, be but been that doesn't make sense because a lot of the stuff that's popular, a lot of the relationship stuff that's popular, is toxic. Look yeah. at all the reality shows, Insecure, um, like Real House, like all this stuff that's out there for people to get to consume in terms of you know defining their their uh, their idea of of relationship. It's just bad. It is, uh, but I think. A lot of it could also be ex- overall exposure. Like, what are you seeing in your immediate circle? Your 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 parents, your aunts, your siblings, your cousins, you know, your neighbors. What kind of relationships are you exposed to? Uh, so that can affect why people think they only have to offer so much. Like, I give yeah. this and I'm supposed to get, you know, double in return. And then, I mean, you just have, we just have... A fairy tale society. So yeah, we we are exposed to a lot of toxic relationships, but we also still have a lot of falsified relationships. Mm. So people have an expectation of perfection, mm. and where we are in a a time where we 
allow ourselves to be perceived as perfect or perceived as one way when mm. we're really not like you have women who will intentionally go to sleep with makeup on. So they wake up and their man doesn't see them a certain way because they're not trying to. Then they like get the sheets messy. I mean, it depends on the color of the sheets. Some women will go to sleep after a man, wake up before him, put on makeup, Yo, and then go way, back, go back way, to bed. That's way too much effort. It is like I mean, I guess if you if you if you catfishing somebody, I mean, I guess you kind of got to do that. This keep is the, true. You got to keep the jig up. So you keep our, the jig going before if, it gets up. <laughs> if our society is built on people who are you know personifying themselves as not themselves, but what they want people to think they are, then I mean, you should expect people to expect perfection mm. and not get it yeah maybe but yeah know. dating does seem i think when we were dating dating didn't seem as complicated as it is now well and i think it's also just because we haven't dated for haven't had to date this is so true. if you don't if you're not engaged in something for an extended period of time you just it just becomes foreign to you mm-hmm. like, like i wouldn't know what to do on it. i mean we just i go go putt putt <laughs> i'm in I'd hope you do more than putt putt. Putt putt. I mean, because I'm thinking. COVID aside, like there are things to do. I mean, yeah. Maybe go do some sip and paint. True. Sip, but sip. Stroll, go to an art gallery. Go roller skating. Roller skating. Brunch. People are not doing uh, dinner no more. People doing brunch. I remember uh, I was in high school after I moved down. Um, And there there was this girl I was interested in. She went to church. I went to church with her. And. I wanted, to, I wanted to ask her out for the longest time. I just, I just never, I never, really, I don't really have game. I'm just not, I'm, I, I just he don't. Uh, if, if Even it, if you literally put the pieces on the board. If it happens, it's, 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 it's And give it's him God. instructions. It's God because he, it's he not, it's not me. It's above me. So, uh, I finally asked her out, right? And I'm like, and I, I could tell she's kind of, you know, she kind of expects, you know, some of the finer things. Not necessarily in life, but just, you know, has finer expectations. Um, so <laughs> ask her on a date and she says, yes. So I go pick her up. And she's like, where are we going to eat? <laughs> so we went to Applebee's. <laughs> I mean, if you were in high school. I mean, yeah, we were in high school, but I mean. A two for 20? It was a two for 20. We still probably could have. I could have afforded to go somewhere a little. Where? Olive Garden? A little nicer, but. TJ at Fridays. She was like, "Oh, we're going to we're going to Applebee's. Nice." Did she find something on the menu? I mean, she ate. Okay. She ate. She ate well. She ate very well. Um, but we ain't go. We we didn't we didn't have any more. No second date. <laughs> yeah, no second date. I had I had tried, and then um, I called her one time, and she was just like, "Yo, this is this isn't gonna this isn't gonna work." They got me my ten dollars. I was like, <laughs> she's like, no. Oh. I was like, what was it? So was it the appetizer? <laughs> <laughs> it was the Applebee's. It was the Applebee's, probably. Um, I feel like you. But I was just. But you know, I, it's, it's no secret for anybody who knows me. I'm, I'm very uh, socially awkward, so that's been consistent throughout my entire uh, adolescent uh, into adulthood. Whereas now, I just, you know, if I don't have to engage um, socially, I, I won't. But if I have to, like, if Jess is like, I, I want to go somewhere, or I got something planned, you know, I'll put on my my social face for a few hours. But when we get home, it's like, Oh, you know, like when y'all get home after the event, you take your bra off and you're like, Oh, and you like, it's just like freedom. That's how I feel when I get back from, from being out and having to be social. So yeah. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Oh, what's number, what's number two for you? Um, Mm. Mm. it's tough. I'm kidding. Uh, I guess just like this is what happens when you don't do your homework. The constant companionship. I mean, it's like a double-edged sword because sometimes it's annoying. Um, Are you mean I'm annoying? Sometimes it's annoying. Uh, but hey, am I you essentially am I just it? always have. It's almost like having a twin that's not your twin because they don't really know everything that you need them to know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you just always have like. If they're willing, you always have someone to do stuff with. You always have someone you're wanting to do stuff with, even when they don't want to do it. Um, it's true. Yeah, it's just like a, a built-in installed friend. Like, like, hey, 
Like I'll look, I'll be like, oh, this is, this is, this event is happening or this new restaurant's opening. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, that's your cue. Like I, I'm trying to go eat there. Say what you mean and mean what you say. If you're just telling me about something, I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> if you want to do something, yo, like, yo, I'm some real stuff. Yo, let's go do this. Y'all want to get like, real? Oh, okay. Forget, forget the five things. No, no, no. Yo, stay, yo, stay on low key ghetto. Stay like, on track. <laughs> like, stay on track. This marriage is, is ghetto. Do not discourage. Uh, husbands are ghetto. <laughs> do not discourage the I've hopefuls. Only, I've only had one, but yo, husbands you're, are just you're, you're, husbands are ghetto. You are like, bursting. This whole marriage thing is ghetto. You are bursting bubbles. I was right such now. an advocate. Like, yo, get married. You know, have your day. Change your name. You know build an empire together nah that is just ghetto uh <laughs> like pull you an oprah get you a steadman y'all have 16 dogs little puppies running around y'all be good but no yeah i guess the constant friendship even though sometimes your friend can be tripping like yeah uh, i don't know what you're talking about no friend trips like your spouse oh and it's this the most true. annoying thing this is true in D world. So we had we. <laughs> I, I try to be. I, I think it's it's fair for us to be transparent. So we had we had a rough week. We did. It was um. It was. I think some of it was spurred from all the things going on in the country, um, a lot of the headlines. Um, some of it was I was running on very uh, low amounts of sleep. Um, we put out two podcast episodes a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I was, I was low, low on energy, low on sleep. Our kindergartner was sick. Everybody in the house got sick. It started with our kindergartner and then the baby got sick and then me and Jess got sick. Uh, and she was home all week and I was just kind of like, yeah. I need her to go. <laughs> um, but we, we just, we weren't, we were, we were missing each other and it was, there was, there was real friction. So Yo, it, um, I was making plans. <laughs> it, uh, it came to a head. Um, Saturday. It was, uh. When I was doing, I was doing the dishes and I have this thing, right? Because our garbage disposal is trash. No pun intended. Uh, I asked Jessica. Oh, that was Friday. Friday. I, was, I asked Jessica, I was like, don't put stuff, don't put, you know, don't put too much in the garbage disposal. Like Jessica will put like lemons, like That's how you get the fresh pumpkins, <laughs> cantaloupes. Like she put everything down the garbage disposal. And I'm like, yo, while a normal functioning Garbage disposal may be able to handle this. Ours is not that. So just try to be a little more careful with what you put down there. So I'm do, trying to do the dishes. The, the sink, the water is rising rather than going down. So I stick my hand down the sink. And of course, I pull out some lemons. So I don't say anything. I don't say a word. You said something. I do not say anything. But I just make, I'm, I pull it up and I look at it. I'm like, oh, it's lemon. Um, lemon, what do you call them? An empty lemon. Like, a wedge? A, as a wedge. Even though I asked for these things not to be put down the garbage walls. But I didn't, I didn't say nothing. I just threw in the trash. And so Jessica walks by and she's like, you know, you can put lemon wedges down the garbage walls, right? And I, it's, it's crazy because I didn't say anything to her. <laughs> I didn't say anything at all, even though she knew I had asked her beforehand not to do exactly what she did. And so she compounds it by, you know, all she did was she just walked by and she, and she didn't do this act literally, but by her saying that all she did was just, <laughs> she, just poked, she just poked me. And I'm like, well, just because something, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. But I was playing and I was like, I said, but I don't want to. And it was too late. She was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. and she kept mumbling, right? She's at the stove and she, I'm at the kitchen. I'm at the sink and she's at the stove and she just keeps mumbling stuff. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I actually told, I actually said it to her. I was like, look, say what your chest. <laughs> I was like, stop mumbling which is crazy because he constantly it, mumbles as at i me. say it with your chest no but she was intentionally saying things under her breath so I that i couldn't so that i, I couldn't hear to be heard so that your i couldn't ears hear just don't work i was like say it with your chest i said quit mumbling so you got something to say say it and then of course she was quiet so i was like yeah that's what i thought a little i'm pretty sure i responded no you didn't say nothing yeah i was like oh i'm sorry i didn't obey yeah obey like Wow, like okay, like I like I run around here with the iron fist. He tries to, so I was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, player, we're not gonna do this because there are plenty of things I ask you not to do that you still do, but it's a garbage disposal. Its intent is to dispose. But when it breaks, who you gonna? You're not gonna call. You're not gonna fix it yourself. You are gonna call me. I'm you know, gonna I'm have to spend Morris money. Jenkins. No, you're not gonna call Morris. You're not, no, YouTube. you're not. You're not gonna call Morris. 
I could figure it out. I just choose not to figure things out because I I got you. Well, since you and have since you have me since you have man me work. since you have me listen to me. Anyways, so yeah, we weren't feeling each other this nah. week, like not at all. Like I slept on the couch. A couple I didn't, of nights. Even, I didn't Volun- even send him down voluntarily. There. I was like, I can't, I can't do it. And you know what? <laughs> like, I, I, was, my, I, I was, I was relieved, space. but I was also upset. I, I know was she like, was upset. I, was I like, noticed this fool dude didn't, has the I, audacity. I know this fool didn't come to bed after he I'm, after he been tripping all week. Because I'm not the type to I'm, like I'm not the type of woman who's gonna be like you need to sleep on the couch. Like I, I just I always find nah, that obnoxious. I was just like I was like yo I I need it. But I think and I woke was, up because I was, usually wake up hot at like two o'clock in the morning. So I like went to to I ripped the blanket off me or some or take off a layer. I was like. Oh, he's not in bed. No. He bet. Okay. I didn't I even tell it. you not to come to bed and you didn't come to bed. Okay. I, need, I needed it. But you know what? It was it was the worst sleep I've and, had. And you deserved but you know what? But you know what? I took, every I, minute of it. I did not complain. I was like, you know, but I, I was, it was just, I have to worry about no negative energy, no tension. I have to worry about speaking to somebody when I woke up. I was just like, you know, I, I just put just, my pillow barrier. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, you know what? I, I just needed this night of separation. Um, but you know what? But that's, it's kind of interesting because I know a lot of people, and I'll finish this up and we'll go we'll take our break and then I'll, I'll add my, my second point when we come back. But I know a lot of people, um, and I know it's common knowledge that couples go through like stages and phases, especially the longer you're together, the more that, the more you go through. Um, but we're very intentional about the things that we put on social media too. And we share a lot on social media and we have a lot of fun. We poke at each other on social media, but I've seen people say, Oh, y- y'all are goals and Oh, y'all are so great. And blah, blah, blah. And we appreciate that. Thank you. Because we do try to project a positive image of a healthy black marriage. Um, and if for no one else, just our daughters, because you know, when you have kids, you're, you're a living walking example. Um, but Oh, <laughs> this thing, Look. this thing is tough. And I, and I know it, but, I know I love this woman and I know this is a woman for me because as tough as it is, as frustrated as I get, as many gray hairs as I've grown since we've been married. It's not on me. Every day, I, as soon as we get done fighting, I'm like, you know what? I can't, I can't even stay mad because I just, this is something about her. Yo, I cannot stay mad at this good woman. That he's but the more she level. Be, I'm the extreme. I'm nah. plotting. I'm like, okay, so let me try and figure out what I'm gonna do with these two kids. You know, I got two kids. Who's gonna want me? <laughs> like, I, I, I'd be like, nobody. Oh. I'd be like, oh, this is what we're gonna do. Okay, I guess it's over. Like, I am so. And in my head, while I'm being extreme, I recognize I'm being extreme, and I know that none of this, like, that I'm making up this false reality that I'm making up, is actually going to happen. In, but I get so upset and annoyed because it's like he does stuff and, I, and and even while we're in the fight I'm usually aware of the fact that we're going to get past this and usually 24 hours is our max but this one kind of went past it 24 us, it, hours it was, a week, it was a good week so a I was like week. I was like, okay, it's over. We're done. Like, I am just almost you know, seven years. I was like, I'm gonna have to figure out how to do this single mom thing. Uh, like, who's getting the house? Maybe we sell the house. We split the oh, profits. I get man. a townhouse. Like, I don't want a yard. It was. It was. It was bad. It's I, as and, bad as it's been and in then a while. The first night he so the, the one night he didn't sleep in the bed, and then the next night I was putting Savi to bed. He was putting Solace to bed, and it took me longer to get Solace to sleep. So I'm thinking he went downstairs to go watch tv so i come around the corner and our bedroom door is closed and i was like he's in our bed and i know as, as how irrational that sounds because it's our bed but I was it like, is our bed. he has the audacity to be in our bed like he needs to go downstairs and go watch something and sleep on the couch again because uh, yesterday he slept on the couch yeah so it's it's rough but it's, even, it's i feel tough. like we both know even while we're in it that like it, this is just temporary. So, like sometimes it's, oh, it's yeah. twenty four hours. Oh, yeah, sometimes it's ten minutes, um, yeah. and sometimes it's a couple of days. But you know, one thing I do appreciate about us is even when we are upset with each other, like I feel like we have mastered not making it obvious to other people. Now, other people might differ. They might be like, "Oh, it's so obvious that they're upset with not feeling each other." But I feel like. We don't do that. Like we, we're not those couples. Let's um, 
Let's pause right there. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll finish up this thought, and then we'll go on to our my second thing. I don't know if we're no, going to get to five. You're on your second thing. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, no, no, I'm not. No, you're still we'll be back. First. All right. So yes, marriage is tough. Marriage is hard, and sometimes when you have disagreements and fights that last a week, you start contemplating when you're going to get divorced, where you're going to live, and what else? How <laughs> see, you see how we think. I just think about sleeping on the couch. Jessica's thinking about... Oh, I'm an extremist. Yeah. I And that's why we work so well, because she Ooh. goes here, and I'm, be, and I'm, just, at step, I'm just... I'm pretty mellow. I'd be at step 10, and David's like... I'm not, I'm, it's not even that serious. And I'm just so beyond anything you can imagine. Like, I was like, well, maybe I'll replace him with a white man. Like, I, was, I was doing some wild stuff. But that's, that's just, you know, when I am emotionally charged. And I mean, you have to understand, you know, when you're, when you're married, you're, though you're not physically connected to someone, like the connection is so deep that, any wiring that's off th- just throws off the whole system. So when he's off, I'm off. When we're off, like my whole mental state is off. Like, whew. And I'm just I'm 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 just an extremist. We'll just leave it at that. Like it, it doesn't yeah. take it takes nothing. So to recap, what was your first? Sex. Sex. Un, un- guilt free. Guilt free sex. Calorie free, low calorie. <laughs> and, then Zero your, sugar, and then your second no one was a built in companion. Yes. Um, and my first, my first uh, thing uh, that I love about marriage is not having to date. Because you're lazy. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so my, my second thing um, is, you know, it was funny. I was watching uh, The Breakfast Club, uh, their episode, their interview from this morning, and they had. Umar Johnson on there and I know a lot of people oh God. how they feel about Umar uh, but he said something which is actually which I actually didn't realize I agreed with until he said it and I was like hmm, I agree with him is that um, basically I can't remember the exact words he used but he said marriage is an economic agreement basically and it, and it was he said it in the course of making his argument as to why he feels like black people black men should only marry black women and vice versa and not interracial marriage um, basically because um, if uh, uh, most women only marry up, they don't marry down. So by marrying within your race, obviously you marry up and then that creates economic, you know, benefits. And then, you know, it, it, it increases uh, statistics like, um, you know, median household income for, you know, black Glass. Americans and, and, and so forth. It but I was like, down. yeah, but I was like, but you know what? It, I mean, it really is like you and I get married and we plan to have kids and the whole plan is to build something one so that we can live a certain type of lifestyle, but also so that our kids don't have to live a certain lifestyle. So I think for me, number two is just, you know, just being able to have somebody who you can, you can scheme and plan and grow with, uh, so that you can each help each other, uh, meet, uh, personal goals, individual goals, and then, you know, collective goals as a family. And I know this is something that we haven't done probably to the best of our abilities, but there have been short term things and individual things that we've each wanted and have gone for. And then, uh, you know, we obviously always support each other, but just having somebody that, you know, you can count on, you know, through thick and thin and, and just map out the rest of your life with, I think it, you know, if you're somebody who is, is ambitious, um, and you marry somebody else who's ambitious, mm-hmm. that helps you meet your goals. You can meet your goals faster rather than having to do it by yourself because two incomes as opposed to one, you know, obviously it, you're, you're at, at a, at more of an advantage if you have two incomes in one household than, than just one. So I'm um, just having a partner in, in time, as, as you say, uh, and somebody who you can, can, can craft, a, um, you know, just an idea of what you want in your future, and your legacy to be and just go out and get it together um, and hustle and bustle and do whatever you got to do to make that a reality. I think that that's, that's awesome. That's one thing that I've enjoyed about marriage. I mean, I never would have thought that uh, we'd have a podcast 
and here we are. I never thought that we'd have a hundred followers or a hundred, hundred likes or 68 subscribers, but here we are. So, you know, this is, it's a small step, so to speak, because we're only 23 episodes in, but it's just like, it's, it's evidence, you know, it's, it's proof that, you know, when we work together, we can do, you know, do some things. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's one thing that I love most about marriage is just having a, always having a partner because there's nothing that I've wanted to go for that you've been like, nah, don't do it. And there's nothing that you've wanted to go for. I've been like, mm, that's I stupid. Get my master's degree. I never said you shouldn't get your master's degree. I, I, I was, I was curious about timing. I was, I was, I was skeptical on the timing. I never said you shouldn't. That's a diplomatic, hmm, but it's okay. You can lie to the people. Um, I guess I'm supposed to have a third thing. Oh, usually you get to three on the way to five. Yes. What else do I like about marriage? The people want to know. Huh? I said the people want to know. I know. I want to know too. I mean. All right. You want me to go? Yeah. So number three for me is. Regularly having. To get to know someone. And what I mean by that. I don't know where you're going with that. Is. Uh, and Jessica kind of alluded to it. Earlier when she was trying to give me. She was trying to give me a hard time. She was like oh so I'm not. I don't grow. I don't evolve or whatever. Me basic. But. Because. No one stays the same. Um, and as long as you're committed in marriage. You're always going to have to reinvent your marriage. And your spouse is always going to evolve and your spouse is always going to have new interests and have new thought processes and just have new, you know, they're just going to be a new self. And to me, that's exciting because I get, it's almost like I get to meet her and get to know her all over again. Every time, you know, she goes through a different stage of her life and that helps reinvent the marriage, so to speak. And as long as you're committed to it and as long as you, you know, you put in the work, um, it, it, offers just like almost a, a limitless amount of opportunities to just kind of redo and retailer and, and, and turn your marriage, you know, upside down. So that's one thing I love, like who Jessica is now at 31 is obviously not who she was at 24 when we got married. And I've enjoyed each iteration of her, you know, up to this point. And I know that I'm going to enjoy each iteration after this point. Um, because you know, she gets older, she gets wiser, she gets exposed to more things and her, her preferences change based on our life circumstances. Like she's a mother of two, two girls. So, you know, a lot of the things that she's going to put her time and effort toward are going to be toward, probably going to be with, you know, solace and sovereign in mind. So I just love that about always having to get to know her again. It's almost like for the first time sometimes. So I think that that's cool. And it's just, you know, another way that you can always kind of keep your marriage fresh and keep it, uh, keep it from getting stale. Um, so that would be my third thing. Um, yeah. my third thing would be, and we, we typically get complimented on this a lot, and it took me a while to actually see it, but we would always get told that we're like in sync. Like, oh, you guys have a good synchronization to you. Um, what was that face for? Do we? <laughs> uh, we didn't last week. <laughs> no, we definitely did not last, last week. Last week, I was like, I don't know what these people talking about. Uh, yeah. But for the most part, you know, we are, we're usually always on the same wavelength. Um, you know, he can typically gauge my thought uh on a situation so sometimes like he'll ask my opinion and i'm like like bro you already know like I, i'm I, sometimes i think you just want to hear yourself talk because i'm pretty sure you know where i would stand on an issue or what my response is going to be because i mean again we're almost 10 years in 10 years in together seven going on seven married so to piggyback it's kind of confusing because you know you're saying he was just saying how you know evolving and changing but at the same time there's still you know the core foundational principles of who you are so 
you kind of know who your partner is, you know, uh, unless it's something extreme. Like I, I, I know I'll hear, hear stories or, you know, somebody will get arrested for like being a serial killer or something. And they have like a wife and kids and, you know, working nine to five and all that stuff. And you're just like, how did you not know? And I always wonder, I'm like, like, what if David's a serial killer and just going out killing people? And then someone's going to ask me, like, did you not know? And I'm like, I guess I didn't because, you know, I, this is the person I know, this is how I know them. So I feel like we're, we're, we are usually in a good, a good sync. We, we kind of flow well with each other. Our personalities balance well, you know, when he's being a big personality, I kind of mellow down. When I'm being a big personality, he's just himself and he's kind of low key. So, you know, we we balance each other well in that sense. So I do appreciate having someone who I am in sync with who, you know, 87.254% of the time is gets where I'm coming from or understands where I'm trying to go. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. It's nice. All right. Yeah. It is. Number four. Number four for me, um, it's actually pretty simple. Uh I just enjoy having somebody to take care of. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who you take care of? Shamika. Yeah, well. <laughs> Um, no, so it's, she's living good. Yeah, um, yeah. I never, uh, when I was younger and single before I met Jess, I never really. I always figured I would get married at some point, but I never really knew what I wanted my marriage to look like, and I never knew what I would want my ultimate family to look like. I always assumed I would have kids as well, um, but I was kind of indifferent on both, you know, both topics. I was like, if I get married, you know, it's great. I'm expecting to, but if I don't, single life isn't that horrible. Um, oh, now single life we, wasn't. If we get if we get married, you know that'd be great. And if we have kids, awesome. But if not, nothing wrong with being a couple without kids. Um, oh, Brent Stedman. So, but as I've, you know, as I've been married, and as we've had kids, uh, and as I've gotten older, um, and my my ambitions have become a little bit more narrow and streamlined. And honestly, they really the 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 end is a better life for my family, for Jessica and our, and our two daughters uh, in terms of the means, the things that I uh, pursue professionally and, and whatnot. Uh, I just, it all comes back to, to taking care of my family for me. And that's while I'm here. And then after I'm gone. So it's a, it's a heavy responsibility and it's a responsibility. A lot of men run from honestly. Um, but for me, as daunting as it is and as big of a burden as it is, and, and I know, and I don't want to, I, don't, I, don't, I never like to play the victim card, but I know women, especially wives and moms, carry a tremendous amount of burden in a family. Um, when the kids are young, all they want is their mom, especially if they're, you know, if they're, if they're breastfeeding. Um, Jessica talks about all the time about how I'll be downstairs with Silas and Jessica will be upstairs or out of the house. And I'll be home with Silas for like yep. two hours. And Silas won't say a thing to me. She won't say a thing. Yep. And then as soon as Jessica walks in the door, she's like, mommy, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm like, I've been gone. Your father um, is right here. So then I default but, and get annoyed with him. And it's like, she just, she literally didn't say a word to me at all. She has FaceTimed me before to ask me for um, something. And I'm like, isn't there an adult with you? So, and <sighs> when Jessica, when Jessica gets sick, you know, she kind of she has to power through right because there's no usually one person in the house doesn't get sick it's usually everybody at some point yeah, is overlapping being sick um i get sick i'm useless i'm just out but just kind of has <laughs> yo, to power, just yo. has to power through and, and still so be and still manage I'm the sick husbands are because it's house. like you think you're the only person who's ever been sick that was literally and so he was sick and i was already annoyed with him so in my head i'm like you think you're the only person who gets sick? Like it, it's so, so extreme. To make to make my point, your nose your nose is the only let, congested nose in the let, world. Let me do the bit. <laughs> okay. To uh, but what I was saying is, I, I know moms carry a lot, but there are there are a lot of unspoken burdens that that dads carry as well, especially when you're 
um, maybe the the single source of income for a family, right? Or maybe when um, you know you have things coming up that your kids want to do or your wife wants to do or things that you um, need to be able to, to fund, provide for, or when you know that your wife is going through a tough time, but you're, you're battling your own demons as well, but you don't, you tend to suppress those so that you can be a support for your wife or for your kids. Um, dads carry, carry a lot too. So, uh, it's, it's a, you know, it's a heavy, heavy burden to, to bear, but honestly, I, you know, I, I enjoy it. I, I, I honestly, I think I thrive under it because I'm always, we've always figured it out together. Obviously, anytime we've, we've come, you know, and we've, we've come into a stormy season. Um, but the thought of figuring things out for the betterment of my family is honestly what, what makes me tick, especially when we, when we hit those lulls. So, you know, being able to look, uh, in, in over the last few years and say, you know, Hey, my career has hit a, hit a very steep incline. Um, and because of that, I've been able to provide, you know, X, Y, Z for my family. I've been able to, um, we've been able to do anything that we've really wanted to, for the most part, I've been able to, to help send my wife and, and our oldest child at the time because Sovereign wasn't born yet to Africa twice. Uh, and that's not a cheap, <laughs> that's not a cheap trip. Yeah. Even if you fly economy, that's not a cheap trip. So, you know, we've been able to do that multiple times as needed uh, without, you know, really batting an eye. And that's just kind of like a microcosm for, for all the things that, that we've been able to do. So um, just being able to provide um, and then in tandem together um, kind of set the, the blueprint for how, you know, we want our girls to experience life and the expectations we want them to have of life. So that's my number four. Uh, I think my number four, which is still a work in progress, um, is just someone who you are supposed to be comfortable being vulnerable with. Post. So vulnerability is definitely something I am still working on. I think because I've you know gone. You saying. Sorry. I think because I've gone so long <laughs> in my life, uh, just being self-sufficient, uh, even within our relationship, there's always been a component of me that's been self-sufficient, um, like to the extent, and I hate to think morbidly, but like, you know, if something is to happen to who? to you, um, Why that be to me? I mean, I think about if something's to happen to me too. Um, but you if lead, lead with that next time. Okay. Not me. So, but I'm talking about my vulnerability. But if something is to happen to me, how am I going to emotionally stabilize myself and then also fill in the shoes that you've established mm. in terms of providing and taking care of the family as well as taking care of myself and, you know, trying to keep everything as consistent as possible. So, yeah, that's an extreme morbid thought. Um, and it's... It's it's rare that I go there, um, but that is something that you know I think about. You know, you've created this this franchise with someone, and you know their co owner, their fifty percent contributor. So you know, just that. What what do I do if it's just if something happens and it's just me, or vice versa? If something happens to me and it's just him. Uh, does he know how to like? the the way that my mind works in terms of taking care of the girls is he going to think of those things um is he going to remember to make certain appointments is he going to remember you know to to give a hug in this instance and you know to reprimand in this instance is he going to remember the lyrics to this annoying kid song like random things like that um but vulnerability like i'll tell people any day like i i'm pretty transparent like i will I mean, I was just talking about sex 30 minutes ago. Um, not detailed, but like I said it. Uh, so I'm, I'll, I, I'll say pretty much anything. Um, but e to be emotionally transparent is something that's very difficult for me. Um, and to have to be dependent on other people is something I struggle with as well. Uh, because I think I've had a lot of disappointment. Or, you know, a lot of broken promises. Someone saying they're going to do this and then they don't do it. That's something I'm very sensitive about. So, and then also feeling like I have to pour so much and not getting refilled. So, 
I think, you know, it's, it's a, when I can muster up the courage to admit that I need to be vulnerable, that I'm weak in a certain area, it's nice to have someone that I can trust to hear me sometimes listen because sometimes he's too busy trying to like either save the situation or you know fix the situation like I don't need a shaman I don't need the Dalai Lama I just need sometimes I just need you to to listen like like all right fake Captain America with your (laughs) with your welded shield um so it's hard for me to be vulnerable I think I have a fear of you know, I, I'm, I try to be tough and not be emotional uh, because I I think I kind of just grew up in an environment where, like, my mom was very emotional. Like, she'd cry at, like, Lifetime movies and stuff. And, like, we would make fun of her and, like, call her emotional. So I think I through that and other experiences, I don't like to look weak. Like, crying seems weak, and it's really not. Um, but that's something I'm working through. Or admitting that, you know, I'm struggling with something emotionally. Uh, I'm overwhelmed. So I do bottle it up for a long time and eventually i will like like i didn't call to everybody else so it's like okay I, I i need to speak i need to to let it out to my husband and you know he's amazing at listening again sometimes because uh, sometimes he wants to fix the situation and be the hero but it is really nice to know that i always have someone's ear and I always have someone who is willing to comfort me. And it's just a matter of me being willing to be vulnerable. Like, there are a lot, like, he, his love language is touch. And mine is, you know, six feet. So, like, mine is, you know, clean the dishes, do the laundry, like, do acts of service. So, um, there are moments where I legitimately, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'll go, like, lay on him. Or like snuggle close to him or something but then i'm like no because then like he might say something that's going to make me like react and i don't want to seem like you know i'm being a sap or i'm being weak but then i also have to remember like this is the person i'm supposed to be vulnerable with so like there, it's a constant conflict but i do like that in the evolution the daily growth within marriage it's it's reminding yourself that this is the person that you know of all the seven point whatever billion people on this planet, this is the person that you're supposed to be the most comfortable being just free and not just physically naked, but like emotionally, spiritually naked with. So that's something that I do appreciate and um, like about being married. So my last one is, is real simple. So the kids, and I know you don't have to be married to have kids, but, um, I know that for us, we were always going to have kids only after we were married. Um, and they're just phenomenal. Under the covenant. And, and, and God's uh, blessed It's marriage. just awesome seeing yourself in someone else and your, your spouse in someone else. And it's kind of scary because you're responsible for a large part of their development and decisions, day-to-day decisions are going to shape who they ultimately end up to be. But... You know, there's just nothing better when my five-year-old runs into my arms when she she gets home from ballet or from school or when I go, uh, our our youngest wakes up from from a nap and you walk into the room and she just looks at you. This is like the biggest grin ever. She's like, hey, you came back for me. Um, It's just just amazing. Uh, Being a girl dad is awesome. Being a a father period is awesome. But, um, you know, just having two girls is just... This is crazy to me because I never would have thought that I would only only have girls. Um, so, yeah, just just kids being a parent is just. just I won't say it's a dream come true because it was never a dream of mine, but be, but now that I'm here, I can't imagine living like any other lifestyle. And they're just they're just a huge blessing. So that's my number five. So I didn't want to, kids were, was something that I was going to put on my list, but I, one, thought it was cliche, and like you would preface, you know, you don't have to be married to have kids. Um, so I'll say it like this, just everything, you know, when I, I think of, of marriage, I almost see like an equation, you've got like parentheses. So it's like everything within the parentheses, you know, the open and the close. So, you know, I, I think about our story, and sometimes I try to like be futuristic, and I think, you know, when we're 
50 and we're empty nesters and you know we're just reflecting on everything that we've accumulated what's that going to be like and and in that I think of the obstacles that we had to overcome just to become Mr. and Mrs. This this house, like y'all, for us to get this house, I literally had to work in a closet that was windowless. And I was miserable. And I pushed through and he was training for his job in Tampa. So he wasn't even here. And it was like one of the most trying times of my life. I was trying to get rear-ended in his car. I was that miserable. Like, I just needed an excuse to not be able to go to work. But I did it. So, like, any time I think about our house, I'm like, like, we built this house literally from the ground up. Like, we got so much favor when it came to getting this house. We watched it. Like, this is this house is our first baby. We got married in October. We closed on this house a month later. Um, so, as long as our marriage is... That's how, like, as long as old as this house is, that's how long our marriage is. So I'm kind of like, we can never sell this house because it's like the one thing we've always had. Um, but you know, I remember like what it felt like to to still be kids, and people were like, "What are y'all gonna do with this five bedroom house?" I was like, "I don't know," but we did it. We built it together. This was something that you know, the two of us coming together, we were able to like blood, sweat, and tears went into this. Did we know what we were doing? No, but here we are almost seven years later, still in this house that we built. Um, not physically, but you know, Ryland built it, but you know, it's our money. We paying for it. Uh, so that's beautiful to me. Our children, like we have two amazing kids. And now those two drive me out of my mind on a regular basis, but it's in the best of ways. And just like he said, like I went to go pick up solace from dance and I didn't even see her coming. She was like a little bullet. She just ran out of the building, mommy. And then just lunged onto my legs. And it, it was just, it was so out of the blue. But I loved it. And it's, you know, picking her up from school and asking her how her day was. Or even this morning, you know, we walked over to the bus stop and I, the one of the sprinklers were going. So I couldn't. So we waited across the street and the bus came and, you know, the stop sign went up and, you know, I gave her a kiss, gave her a hug. And, you know, she just kind of walked on her own and got on the bus. And I'm thinking, wow, like, when did she become such a big girl? And this is just five. And, you know, at six, she's going to do something. And I'm going to say the same thing. And then you've got Savi, who is just a little bulldozer in this house and has just come in and shaken us in such a great way. And, you know, I'll look at her little face at the end of the night after, you know, I'm exhausted from chasing her around and cleaning up messes behind her. And I'm like, wow, like, this person is amazing. And in 50 years, like, I think of older couples who have lived and you know they've been married several decades and i i wonder like do you sit down and do you reflect like it's because of this marriage and because of the foundation of this marriage that we were able to build all of these floors to this building um of life so that's something that i really appreciate just the beauty of what marriage can construct um and if it's done the right way with the right people who have the right mission um, and the right understanding. It's, it's definitely a beautiful thing. Well said. Thanks. Well said and well done. Um, so I think it's a good spot to end. We uh, did it without fighting. <laughs> we tied a marriage discussion without fighting. Wait till you see the um, cameras off. So this was, this was awesome to, to, to do and to put together. So I'm going to try to wrap really quickly. Um, thanks to everybody who's watched. And like I said at the beginning, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Connect with us on social media and Instagram and Facebook. We love you guys. Thanks for uh, following. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. I'm going to go ahead and bring Jay Belk in now. We're still in a pandemic. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Be safe. We'll see you guys next week. Episodes every Wednesday. We love you guys. We're out. Peace. I don't care. Way too far. Can stop me now. I done came way too fucking stop me now. I done came way too fucking stop me now. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah, I done came way too fucking.